during the 560 days of stillness, but no one was counting. God just met me in a moment and he reminded me of what it was to find my first love again. And I, I feel like, yeah, it's the best. I'll just say that. But I was talking to someone yesterday, or maybe it was maybe it was two days ago, I don't know. No, it was yesterday. Golly, the days feel so long. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about disappointment. And I was up here on this stage for 12 shows, I think it was 12 shows, before the shutdown happened. And as a child, God would show me these tours and visions and dreams and I would literally see them. I could see crowds of people and I could see tour buses and I could see charts and awards and all these things. I wasn't even singing. I was like the closet singer that sang in her shower, sang when she was getting dressed. Nobody knew that I could sing. And um, my mom went to the the worship leader at our church, the choir director, and said, hey, my daughter sings all the time, all the time, all the time. And I don't know if she's any good, but if you would just put her on the back row of the choir, maybe she'd have an outlet to get this out, you know, and do something with it. And so I went and I auditioned. I didn't really audition. He showed me this song behind the church and he said, sing this for me. And it was the song Hosanna. And I was like, like really sheepish and he goes Lauren I have heard you laugh before you better sing that song and I was like oh gosh and I said I don't know if this is singing or if this is screaming I don't know because I was like belting it but I didn't know what belting was I just thought I was screaming at the top of my lungs with the melody attached and I found out that's not what that was <laughs> and he said get ready because in two weeks I'm going to have you lead this song and um I had never really sang in front of people. I, I was so new to it. But in this time, God started showing me all these things. And here we are, fast forward. Every single decision that I had made in my career, I made focused on the dream, focused on those visions that he showed me over and over and over and over again. It says those without vision, they'll perish. And it was like he gave me the foresight for years and years and years and years to come. And here I am and I have finally arrived to the moment that I was seeing all of these years. And it was the Lauren Daigle World Tour. It looked exactly like, exactly like what he had shown me. Like exactly. But at the start of the tour, he said, hold it loosely. And I was like, all right, well, that's interesting. Didn't expect that. And he said, hold it loosely. And I remember just the first, <laughs> don't tell anyone, uh, but the first, second show, one of our major props broke. We're not gonna reveal any secrets yet. 
And I remember the team coming to me and they were like, you are not gonna believe what just happened. And I was like, it's all right. And there was just an ease about letting go of things that would be seemingly important. And then the 12th show came and everything had to shut down. And I remember feeling like, God, what is this disappointment? It took me six months to literally get out of bed. I was so heartbroken because at 16, he showed me something, a dream, a vision. And 12 years later, I was there to fulfill that. I could see it. It was exactly what I, he had shown me. And on the 12th, something interesting about the 12th, I gotta look that up. But on the 12th show was when it all fell apart. And the weight of disappointment is so suffocating. It is so isolating. It is so gripping. And I don't know if there is anybody that has walked in with disappointment tonight, but I promise you, he can be the restorer of broken dreams. I promise. Because the thing that's so interesting is I used to never talk about God at shows. I went through this phase where I didn't want to talk about God at shows because I wanted it to be more inclusive and I didn't want people to feel afraid. I wanted them to feel invited. But how could I introduce love when I'm not talking about love himself? And in this time of 560 days, I said, God, what, where did all this go? And he said, Lauren, you got to go back to why you sing. Why do you sing? You sing to love me. You sing to show me that you care. That worship is the thing that precedes a miracle. If you are desperate for a miracle and you begin to worship and worship and worship, your eyes will become so focused on the thing you're worshiping that you won't have time to give fear and anxiety and stress to the things of this world. And he said, you have forgotten. Yeah, it's amazing. He said, you have forgotten the heart of worship. Just come back to your first love. And I am so grateful for those 560 days because not only did he take away disappointment, but he allowed this stage to be an even more beautiful experience than it would have ever been because I actually remember worship now where I was going through the motions and just doing show after show after show. Now I get to sit and bask in his presence every single night and I was missing it. And he just said, girl, come on back to your first love. Just come back. I don't know if you've walked in with disappointment. I don't know if you've walked in with sorrow. I don't know what it is that you've come in here with tonight. But I do know that he who has began a good work, he is faithful to complete it and he will complete it. And even in disappointment, even in the weight of the world on your chest, God is gracious, he is kind, he is loving. And he will take you even in spite of your weaknesses, even in spite of you trying to run as far away from him as you possibly can. You might not even know who God is. You might be an atheist. You might not care about all this at all. And that is a-okay. I'm glad you're here tonight. I fully believe that by the end of it, you're gonna know a little bit of something about Jesus that you may have never known before. Come on in. Come on, sit at the table, because we got a lot of food to eat. There's a feast, and it's wonderful. But in this 560 days, I say, God, I'm not forsaking a moment of worship. So we're going to do some old school songs, all right? We're going to take it back just a little bit. Y'all want two old school songs or one old school song? You can, two. All right. So here I am walking in.